as we're patiently waiting for news about pyrolutamide or the results of the micro study conducted by Dr. Barhothi and Dr. Blox and for vertiporphin, I decided to revisit the subject of RU5841 as it's to this day one of the compounds that I get asked about the most in my comment section. And I made a video about RU in the past, but this one is gonna be more in depth around its safety profile and whether you should trust RU5841 with your body. But before jumping right into the subject, I wanted to share with you guys something that is so much precious to me. This video is my 50th video on my channel. I've been posting for one year and a half now, and in each video I try to detail as much as possible one aspect of the management of androgenetic alopecia. Each video is also about 12 minutes long on average, so if you think you won't have the time to go through all of my content, you can simply book a meeting with me to get the specific information you need about your specific case of hair loss whether it's about upcoming treatments that may be beneficial for you or existing research behind already approved FDA approved treatments or Cosmarna, for example. So I just wanted to offer this option for those of you who maybe don't have the time to go through all of my content just to extract one piece of information. I thought this may be beneficial, but uh, let's jump right into our topic. So the first thing that's worth mentioning about RU, and I'm gonna get into the side effect profile of the compound, but before I wanted to mention that uh, RU have a different mechanism of action than finasteride. Finasteride, for those who don't know, is a blocker of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. This enzyme is the one catalyzing the transformation of testosterone, the male hormone that uh, is being made in our testicles, primarily to its more potent form, the more active form, dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone then goes away in peripheral tissues, exerting the androgenic effects that we all know. One of them is unfortunately for people predisposed to androgenetic alopecia is hair loss. And finasteride blocks that whole process by decreasing the DHT levels in the blood. Uh, but RU5841 has a slightly different mechanism of action as it's a topical anti-androgen. It's an antagonist of the androgen receptors on hair follicles or anywhere in the body really. So, but we apply it topically on the scalp. So you apply RU5841 wishing that it would bind to the androgen receptors on hair follicles competitively antagonizes these receptors by binding to all of the binding sites so that when DHT or any other androgen really comes to the hair follicle, it won't, it won't find any binding sites so it won't be able to exert its, uh, its damaging effects to the hair follicle. And now that we got to know the mechanism of action of our UO5841, we can extract two um, interpretations. The first one being the efficacy. Theoretically, the efficacy of RU is going to be much higher than the efficacy of finasteride, just because some people suffer from androgenetic alopecia, not only from the effects of DHT, but also from the effects of testosterone and other androgens in the scalp. So uh, finasteride only blocks the effects of DHT and not even to the full extent. Uh, some studies um, uh, demonstrated that finasteride decreases DHT uh, scalp levels up to 70 per down to 70%. So there is still that 30% that can cause some problems to some men. Also, the uh, levels of testosterone are not changed with finasteride. So these levels of testosterone, although may cause a lesser damaging effects to the hair follicle, may still cause that. So uh, some men, for finasteride, me included, don't have that satisfactory results and uh, still suffer from hair loss, or at least they won't experience any crazy regrowth when they start using finasteride. While with RU5841, you got blockade of the whole receptor. So it doesn't matter if it's DHT, doesn't matter if it's testosterone or any other androgen, there, there won't be any anti uh, androgen, androgenetic, sorry, damaging effects to the hair follicle. So more efficacy, theoretically. And the second interpretation that we can extract from the uh, knowing the mechanism of action of RU is the side effect profile, which will be much more severe 
theoretically again i'm gonna get into the personal anecdotes and the clinical data in just a minute but theoretically knowing that it blocks all of the androgens in the body just a slight minimum concentration of ru get into the systemic circulation would cause a lot of problems especially to the male body because us men we need uh maybe we won't need dht other than in utero or uh, in puberty but when it comes to other androgens they're quite important to your body uh testosterone primarily uh to your cardiovascular health to your sexual health to your neurological health so if ru 5 a for one gets absorbed absorbed sorry to the systemic circulation to the blood it can block these androgen receptors not only on hair follicles but in different sites in your body causing all range of cardiovascular issues and that's have been reported by some users of ru 5 a for one palpitations chest pain and all range of cardiovascular issues it could ca uh, cause some neurological deficits or uh, issues problems as well and could cause sexual side effects as well that would be much more severe than those of uh, finasteride right? because it doesn't only block the effects of dht and it does it also blocks the effects of all the other androgens so the main problem with ru5841 when it was first developed is will there be any systemic absorption and i made a whole video discussing ru as i said in the beginning which you can go and watch after watching this one and i really recommend to do so it's a really uh, good uh, in-depth video where i talked about how ru was shifted between companies one company bought another and then the research stopped and then one other researcher got hold of the research and uh, uh, I concluded and said in that video that if a compound is so great and it's so promising, why would a company discontinue researching it? So that's my first take on it. The second one is uh, regarding the preclinical and the phase one and presumably phase two that has been conducted for RU5841, where the researchers said that there were no signs of systemic absorption no anti-androgenic side effects whatsoever and again i refer you to that video where i talk in full details about those uh clinical trials but just a brief review they said the company said that there was no signs of any systemic absorption of ru58841 when we conducted the study on human beings and also when we conducted a study in the preclinicals on mice so that should be promising correct uh, i don't think so because uh, I just was reading yesterday about um, one hair loss sufferer uh, who applied for a freedom of information request to the FDA. Uh, he wanted to extract the uh, results of the phase two clinical trial, presumably uh, given uh, the results of which given to the FDA, and he was successful doing that. This is all alleged. Uh, to be clear and one of the information he got is that in those clinical trials uh, there were some side effects as following low libido insomnia uh, heart palpitations and fatigue so neurological cardiovascular sexual and um, yeah and sexual side effects uh, that are linked to or that are a sign of uh, some systemic absorption of ru58841 and we already know from various studies that low testosterone levels in men may increase their risk of developing coronary artery disease, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes, and a range of other more chronic medical conditions. So uh, that's about the safety of RU5841. You got the official narrative that says that there is no systemic absorption of the drug, although not even given us the results of the phase uh, two clinical trials. And you've got the unofficial narrative, the narrative of people who try to investigate this compound and the results of which uh, have uh, demonstrated that there is, in fact, some uh, degree of systemic absorption. So, so the drug, I, I wouldn't say it's not, it's completely not safe. But these findings contradict the official narrative, and that's one big thing to take away. And you've got also, and I made sure to talk about this in the end of the video, 
the personal anecdotes and i'm not the person to encourage uh believing in personal anecdotes when we have clinical data but in this case we don't we simply don't there is missing data for ru5841 for some reason the uh, company didn't feel encouraged or motivated to continue the uh, development and research of this compound um, so uh, we go to personal anecdotes and a lot of users uh, in different forums on the internet uh, reported sexual cardiovascular chest pain all range of symptoms when they started taking or applying RU5841 on their scalp further confirming the second hypothesis the unofficial one the one that uh, said that there is some systemic absorption of RU5841 but in the case of RU5841 the biggest problem I have is not actually the side effect profile my problem is the lack of data and when you have lack of data it's really not worth it and uh, one caveat to all of that i don't really buy into the whole thing of the company didn't feel financially encouraged to pursue the development and further research of this compound they already got the phase two so if they knew uh this compound could um surpass finasteride and uh, dr van heste the head of research of ru in that company said that uh in six months of usage in the phase two or you had the same uh, efficacy of that of finasteride. So if, they, if that was if that statement was really true, I wouldn't really think that that company would miss on that chance to make a revolution in the hair loss industry. So uh, one more thing, please take all the information that I said in this video with a grain of salt. Unfortunately, little official information about this drug, and I had to look deep into the internet and uh, in forums and articles and sources that i'm not 100 percent sure of so take all of the information that i said here with a grain of salt and the takeaway from this video please don't uh, trust a compound we know so little about with your body don't do it uh, it's not worth it and uh, some promising other compounds are coming in the way like pyrolutamide, like rutoporfin, GT20029, made with Protex, such a wonderful technology. And uh, the thing is, with these upcoming compounds, we have a lot of research. A lot of subjects, a lot of people experimented with it, not only personal anecdotes, but supervised by experts and uh, the results and side effects are well documented. With that, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Please uh, check my meeting service if you want to meet me for 30 minutes. I have also the one hour option if you wish to do so. If you have a lot of questions or you want to talk more in details, maybe about the uh, psychological aspect of hair loss. A lot of people who call me uh, sort of get into that. Or if you just want to ask me about the latest research or uh, your specific type of hair loss. Also subscribe, like the video, and uh, I'm gonna try to make my posting schedule more regular in the upcoming weeks. Uh, with that, stay safe.